meanwhile, when the slides are getting on the screen, uh, welcome on my behalf also. And uh, it seems to be that I'm only, only one between you and Lungs, and, uh, and we've got to uh, got, got uh, see whether, whether we will have a pizza or not, so something else today. Uh, before that, uh, I will talk to you a little bit on, on the research on APIs. And uh, how about you? How many of you represent the universities or research institutes? One, two, yes. Uh, how many of you public organizations? About less than 10. And uh, private companies? Wonderful. That's good, good to see, see this. Many people here. So, yep. and thanks. Yep, you're ready to go. So this is uh, something uh, that I really made for you last night. So, so this is the first time ever this presentation, and hopefully uh, you will enjoy as much as I, I did, uh, because I, I tried to figure out uh, what is happening here with this API on on the research side and, and brought it to to. So <clears throat> I could say that okay, the book is done already. So why do bother to do just something else but just only advertise our book. But uh, I have to also say that this book was written more than one year ago and, and then translated so. So basically it's getting old already. One, one of the ideas that we had while writing this book was that we used references citing previous research and building on that. And, and there, therefore there are some, some references included all, also. But instead of uh, only relying that we have done this type of book, uh, so what is happening after that? And, and, and therefore, I uh, uh, made some research. Uh, it has been said that half of the research is waste, <laughs> but it's difficult to say in the advance that it's half. So, so there, therefore, there's some, something that we cannot know. Also, I have to say that uh, it would be important to also understand why research is important. So, so research is the way how you can really produce some solid uh, results in a systematic way. And, and with APIs, of course, this is not, not a new thing as such. It has been there decades, and uh, in the previous 10, 10 years, we have seen that there's a lot of uh, things happening, and, and these type of events are here. We, we can see that a lot of different uh, good uh, steps has been taken. But then the question is that uh, the world is changing all, all the time. And then that challenge is also what we have study what we have, have found previously. Uh, this is an example and um, it was great uh, designed by organizers that uh, my namesake Marco Tori Grossa has uh, his uh, presentation before because then <coughs> you already had an idea about the two-sided and multi-sided platforms and I don't have to use them also but the fintech example here shows that okay there's plenty of players in, in that domain. And, and then the APRs are the one way that actually glues these operators and actors together. And this is what we believe. And then also we believe that uh, APRs are the way that how you actually can decouple different actors and their offerings. So in order to make the, uh, each actor proceed with their own development, their own offerings, APIs are the way how you can standardize the interface and, and then the other partners can use your API like the cloud printer example so does. But then the question is also whether this holds true. Is it so that we need that type of isolating mechanism there? Is it also the way how the, let's say, fintech develops faster? So, what is happening in the IPI research? And, and uh, as I'm an uh, academic guy, I, I made a literature search. So, so last night I, I went to the Web of Science, Thomson Reuters, the biggest database, most solid research, and used uh, application programming interface uh, as a search word. API is a little bit tricky because it's, uh, well, there's a lot of other three word combinations that can be also used. From API, so I decided just to use application programming, and, and this is in a way that 2019 is on the left hand side. So just a number of different papers on that database. And as you can see, okay, there is a lot of uh, uh, 
papers coming up in past years. But also, we know that the, it's about 15 to 20 percent per year the increase uh, that is happening in, in the research outcome. So the number of papers per every year is increasing in 15 to 20 percent. So if we think about this, it's just a little bit more than just the average increase. So from that number, we could say that okay, this is not specifically much increasing. But it's increasing as much as, as other topics. And also, if we turn it around, we can see this type of curve uh, here, which can be seen as a diffusion curve also. And uh, also, I think that the you know the hype cycle, and then the question is. What is actually happening with APIs, and is, is that so that we are seeing, witnessing at the moment, to some extent, this kind of a peak of inflated expectations? And, and then, if we think about the depression curves here, it might be something like this. So, so it's then the question: How fast this is actually happening? And then we can see the differences between domains. In that is different. We have some parts that are faster adopting this uh, development and then some parts that are not represented here are not adopting that much. Uh, also from that uh, about 2000 records, you can see where, where this uh, is happening. It seems that it's happening mostly in the States and, and a little bit on China. Uh, some uh, places also from Europe uh, and, and then uh, it's possible also to dig deeper on the topics and see who are actually the active authors there and, and they clusterize these things. And this is based on co citation so who are citing each other. And if you see any studies on the co citation studies, you have to understand that this is actually looking backwards. So when I'm citing somebody, it means that I'm looking backwards to previous research and then selecting something that I trusting or disagreeing or agreeing or something like that. So this actually uh, reflects what is the structure uh, in the behind. And if we go, go deeper on, on that one, it's uh, actually, it's, I think, that more close to things that we are interested in, so computer science part. So we can see that, OK, here, here are some papers, and, and then over the deeper and also, uh, then if we went to the computer science, just narrowing down a little bit on, on our perspective, we can see these type of structures there, and then start to understand what we already know. So this is the way how it's possible to understand what is the results of previous research. And uh, then I made one more attempt. So try to use the computer science, social science, businesses as a limitation, and then what has happened in the past 10 years. And this reflects that. So there, there are a couple of uh, uh, papers that are sent out. And also, I changed the from co citation to the bibliographic coupling to method. And this method changes our focus from past more to this day. This uh, combines those papers together <coughs> with side the same authors. So basically meaning that the, these here have the similar type of uh, background and citing a similar type of uh, research. And, and then uh, I also selected a couple of these and, and uh, we see that Bacon and, and Cabarasso are actually from a uh, bioinformatics, that kind of journal, and, and as you can see from the title, it's not probably not much uh, for anybody for you, of you guys, the, these papers, but it's of course includes uh, API as some sort of mechanism there. But if we take a couple more, so uh, Cimino 2019, and, and also I think here, from here, so, so this comes more close to topics that are also present in this event. Mm -hmm. So 
middleware solution for integrating IoT and also a deep learning framework for intelligent malware detection. And even uh, in the down part of the paper about the analysis of this ecosystem. So this is something that you can get from uh, joining the research process and utilizing also our research, uh, research researchers. Uh, I check the scale. Yeah, it's fine. So, uh, so the second half of this presentation goes uh, these uh, few certain topics that I chose for you. So, so by reading the past things, I selected the six or seven papers here in order to show that what has been somehow attracting my my sight reading those and, and also considering the program that we have in this event. The first two papers actually are about the API uh, usability. And that comes close also to the other, other words like uh, developer experience. And I think that the, actually the first presentation from the cloud creator, I think that was mentioning that the attracting the awareness of uh, potential users. But also, I think that uh, it comes close to like, uh, the first one says that uh, a lot of API usability is very technically minded. But then the question is actually that humans are, and developers are human, humans, so, so it means that it has to be usable. And by the way, when reading these, I also noticed that uh, Google has done some patenting on, on uh, how to use machine learning in reading APIs. So what is the way and, and the method how you can employ machine learning and, and getting uh, understanding and selecting what, what different APIs are doing. And that comes also one perspective. If we know that there is uh, in different catalogs, there is uh, tens of thousands of different APIs. And that's really not the human's work to get understanding what, what are those APIs doing, but that's something that you can use machines. But it also depends how the APIs are described, how easy it is to understand what is happening there. So the, these uh, papers are giving a nice, nice insight on, on the usability criteria, what, what should be used, what could be used in different settings, and also as this one underlines, so software engineering is an efficient manner that meets industry objectives or faster to market. So very much a business driven also the person. And then number three here uh, comes close also the EU policies, so about the data sharing and interoperability. And what, what are the, uh, the data pooling requirements that are enabling and, and fostering the third party innovation. And this comes also close to the idea about having the, this type of uh, uh, multi sided platform. So, what is the way how you can attract actually other developers and direct producers and, and users on, on your platform? And then, a few more API security. I think that also in this event is to some, some extent present. And uh, Macy may, may uh, comments there that future proof architectures, uh, enterprise needs to combine identity access control with the data security. And that's also a very good point that typically the problems are more created with the IAM revolution if it's not done well properly way. And then uh, one topic that I was expecting to see even more, but probably depending on, on the source, uh, is the, uh, this kind of uh, event-driven uh, APIs. So a lot of stuff that has been done is a functional APIs, but then we are probably coming to more, more towards event-driven, so when something happens, then triggers API to send some data, to really find data forward. And then, final one is about the 
interplay between Platon architecture and producers. So this is uh, interesting stuff because, as I said in, in the beginning, that we have this kind of uh, uh, <coughs> idea behind that we should standardize and use APIs in order to enable the, the best possible way to advance and, and uh, <coughs> enable the innovation for each uh, actor in, in that kind of ecosystems. But based on the simulation studies, they, they are showing that it seems that uh, the strict decoupling is not the best way to achieve this type of uh, market performance, but it probably might need in some settings that you should have a more decoupled, so, so it means, uh, in, in my reading, more uh, joint collaboration between partners in order to uh, speed up the development. And then we have a couple of good examples also in Finland where we have this kind of uh, big research programs or uh, uh, alliances or different type of, uh, different type of uh, uh, joint projects which are actually producing better solutions than, than the, the independent actors could do. And it seems that, okay, we can also see that from the simulation when we can have a, that, that type of uh, setting that we can keep, keep the variables steady. And then the final one, uh, I'd like to also advertise that we got the funding decision just last week from the business Finland and we are getting ready to run this type of project from a, a SaaS business to platform APIs. Many uh, companies have already changed their business to the software as a service type of business. But then now it's a question if companies are going towards the platform of businesses, then it probably means that you have to have these APIs in some way. And, and that will change not only your offerings, but also the way how you actually operate internally. And these are the things that we are going to uh, study on, on that process that is led by Tommy Mikkonen from the University of Helsinki and uh, I am Nina Helander from the University of Tampere. And uh, we try to understand that, okay, this is a really complex systemic uh, thing that we are approaching. We have a nice set of partners, a couple of those partners are also here here in this event and uh, APRs are, are the way how we can combine and uh, ensure connectivity and then the most difficult thing I still think that is the business perspective and how it's possible to create value for its partners and, and make, make that kind of uh, new, new business viable. If you are interested on that, so please indicate in some manner to me. So, so we are happy to share our results or also before the process ends. That will happen in, in two years, I guess. Okay, thank you all. Thank you for attention, and uh, I think that is time for the questions.